The information in this video is provided for informational and educational purposes only. Welcome to Dose of Deanne, where you'll get a little shot of what my life is like living with SMA. Have you guys seen the sitcom Speechless? It's based on a young man who has cerebral palsy and how he navigates through school and life with his quirky family, I would say. It's pretty funny and a lot of the issues that they have on the program are really relevant to the disability community. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. It just wrapped up its third season. And after a short word from our sponsor, I'm going to be talking about kind of the main topics that were covered this season and a little bit about my thoughts on the characters and things like that. So take a quick look at this message and I'll catch you on the other side. This vlog was made possible by a sponsorship from Avexis, a clinical stage gene therapy company relentlessly focused on bringing gene therapy out of the lab and into the clinical setting for patients and families devastated by rare and life-threatening neurological genetic diseases. To understand how gene therapy is changing the way we see genetic diseases, check out ExploreGeneTherapy.com, www.ExploreGeneTherapy.com. Explore Gene Therapy is a resource for learning more about gene therapy, including its history and how it is being studied. Visit www.exploregenetherapy.com. Welcome back. If you haven't watched the show, like I said, I highly recommend checking it out. The main character's name is JJ, and he has cerebral palsy. He's played by an actual person who does have cerebral palsy, so I think that adds a lot of authenticity to the character. His name is Micah Fowler, and so I think there's big things in this guy's future because he does a great job portraying that character. Another character you might recognize is JJ's mother, Maya, on the show, and she's played by Minnie Driver, and she has a very strong personality that just brings a lot of uh, fun to the character. Another kind of recognizable person is um, Cedric Yarborough. I'm sorry, I'm horrible at pronouncing names. Um, but he plays JJ's caregiver at school, and he just has a great personality and is such a funny character that uh, he adds a lot to the show. You can actually stream the show through abc.com for free or through Hulu if you have a subscription to that. So now's the time to turn it off. I'm talking about season three and the finale, so I don't want to give any spoilers. A big topic for season three was JJ getting prepared to go to college. And I know that was an important thing in my life, so I know a lot of people can relate out there. And you can see in JJ's character, he had his own doubts about whether he could do it or not. But he was determined that he was going to go to college. One episode, he wanted to make a cup of coffee independently to kind of show that he can do it on his own. Let's just say it didn't go exactly as planned. Uh, in the DeMeo fashion, there are a lot of fiascos involved, but in the end, he did get his cup of coffee. Along with getting ready for college, another storyline was JJ's mother, Maya, having to let go and allow JJ to have more independence to go to college. It's kind of been fun to see over the three seasons her progress as well because she wants to have her son be completely independent, but she knows he needs a lot of help and assistance to do that. And she's always been the hands-on parent, so letting go has been very difficult for her. And in the last episode, I thought it was kind of interesting. She had a business thing that she kind of expected JJ to go, go in on her with and kind of help her out. And when his social life was, um, kind of kept him from doing that. At first she wasn't very happy with it, and then a parent pointed out how great it was that he had a social life and was too busy to come along. 
and it kind of clicked with her. That's what she wanted all along. And now she has to be the one to be independent herself as well. So I thought that storyline was kind of interesting too, to see that evolve. And she's getting her own career now and kind of um, finding time for herself. Another main topic this season was JJ getting a girlfriend. And this was really fun to see being portrayed on television because I don't think a lot of times people realize that you can date someone in a wheelchair. And actually, that was part of the whole plot because she wasn't sure if she wanted to date JJ because he was in a wheelchair. But after a while, she realized that she liked him for him and that they should give it a shot. So that was fun to see happen throughout the season. In the last episode, or one of the last episodes, it was time for JJ to meet her parents, as her dad in particular. And she had warned him that he was going to be tough on him and all this and that. And when he saw JJ, he kind of wrote him off like, oh, he's harmless. And so they kind of went out of their way to show that JJ was a typical teenager. We can't forget about Kenneth, the caregiver. It's been fun seeing how their relationship develops throughout the years, and he's always hilarious. Not to mention the rest of the DeMeo family, who's always supportive in their unique ways. I really look forward to season four, seeing JJ head off to college. I know my college experience could have been turned into a sitcom, but I'm anxious to see how Hollywood portrays it. What I love most about this show is that it normalizes disability in a comedic way. So you don't have to have a disability to enjoy this show, and you can learn a lot along the way. I want to know what your favorite episodes were, what you think about the uh, plot lines this year, and just uh, what you think in general. We have some discussions going on over in the forums, so please join in. And let us know what you think. That's all I have for you today, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.